Hi, this is Nate with Keysoft Solutions. In today's Getting Started video, we're going to look at Auto Stripe for AutoCAD. Today we're going to look at linear markings. This will probably be the first thing you look at when you install the software. Um, here in the Auto Stripe ribbon, we have uh, several pull downs here on the left that capture most of the linear markings outlined by the MUTCD standards. We can see all of the white lines here, lane lines and edge lines, and then we have center lines uh, in yellow here. I've already laid out a few things on screen, a uh, simple little intersection design here. Let's zoom in and see how these are constructed. So this center, double center line, if I zoom in, this is an auto stripe object, meaning that it's not just a, uh, a simple AutoCAD entity. If I explode it, it would be a polyline. If I double click on it, it's going to bring up uh, a properties window. And this allows me to set things like the width of the striping, uh, the separation between lines and the width of the lines. So let's make this a uh, 0.5 feet between the stripes and the stripes themselves are 5, 0.5 foot wide. There's some other options here that are in regards to labeling and um, uh, surface modeling. So there I hit OK and this object is updated to reflect those changes. So to create new objects, let's start from the end of this uh, existing stripe with more yellow striping. So from this point, maybe we want to do a uh, passing lane. Let's click on this tool. And now we have some options about how to draw this. We can draw it freehand, just clicking points um, to create straight lines and arcs, uh, which I'll demonstrate first. So let's click at the end of this, and we'll just go down the road kind of freehanded. You can see if I click once, hit enter, I'll get a straight line. There it is. If I, let's, let's erase that and redraw it. If I want a curve, it's a little different than AutoCAD. You actually click three times. Uh, your second click will be you know, somewhere along the arc, and then your third click will be the end point of the arc. And you can then continue on, uh, and it'll always remain tangent, regardless of, of where you go with that marking. So there we go, that's a little out there, but, but it demonstrates the point. The other way, uh, some other ways to, to draw uh, geometry from these linear markings, Let's keep using the same object. The other linear markings work the exact same way. Let's do um, a split road. So in this case, we just have the edges of pavement, and we want to you know, center this line somewhere between the two edges. So I'm going to click on either side of the carriageway, and then there's a number of divisions I want. So maybe there's you know, just a four-lane road. There'd be four divisions. Um, so let's say there's four in this case. And we want this to be the center line, so it's going to be division two of four. Hit enter, and there it finds that point between the edges of the carriageway. Now I move down the road, and I can either just click freehand or I can do another split road command. So I'll do another split road command. I'll do one side of the carriageway and then the other. Just hit enter to accept that there's four and that we're working on division two and there it found that point for me. If I complete the command, it's now drawn that center lined object uh, equidistant between the edges of pavement. We also have tools that let you use existing geometry. So maybe you've already drawn in uh, some lines and you've done some offsets um, or you have you know, a center line station or something like that. You wanna use those objects we can also do that. So let's go back to our double center. Let's go pick existing and click on that center. Great. Hit enter and we can we can do another segment if we'd like. Uh, we can also do an offset. So let's say we want to do a, a um, lane line offset from this center. 
So I'm going to do O for offset. Pick my existing line, which is this one. And let's pick that. And offset distance is 10 feet. And there we've offset that 10 feet away from that center line we've already drawn. The next thing I want to look at is uh, continuing lines from an existing line. So this, this example, we have a solid lane divider here with this turn lane. And we want to continue from this point with a dashed line. If I were just to draw that line, just pick it normally, click the end point, and go on down the road. If I zoom in, you can see that the line starts with a, a dash and not, and not a gap. And we really want to start a, get with a gap from the end of that solid line. So let's erase that and draw it again. And this time I'm going to pick G for gap from previous down here. It's going to automatically suggest a gap distance based on the line that I chose, which had a six foot gap. So I'll hit enter to accept the default, pick the endpoint, and draw it down the road. Now, if I select it and zoom in, you can see it starts with the appropriate gap and then begins a dash. I hope that you found this explanation of our linear markings helpful. Thanks for joining us. Next time we'll be looking at transverse lines, uh, things like crosswalks and stop bars. Thanks.